Hi, my name is Tomasz Poszetek and in this video I would like to walk you through the ways that we can actually go to monitor and review the runs of the UI flows, so the RPA bot runs. Actually, this topic is very important because when we're building bots, the business actually not only expects that the bots are going to run without any issues and that will do what is expected from them to do, but as well that we will be able to deliver them information how these bots are actually performing, where and if they are failing, what are the most common failure reasons, and actually what are these bots just doing. This is even more important when we're talking about this unattended mode. So then it is not only the business that expects this information, but, it's, but it is also the IT that expects us to be aware what our bots are doing. And so with the latest addition to the Power Platform called the Monitor, we're now given the new tool to not only review what the bots are doing, because well, that was actually with us for some time. So we were able to actually go to the bot run and then check what steps it took. But with the monitor functionality, we are also able to review the queue. So we can go and see what is the queue of the pending tasks on the specific Azure on-premises data gateway, and then as well to change the priority of those pending tasks, and as well to go and to check or remove some specific tasks from those queues. Um, plus, what is also important is that we had an update of the COE, so the Center of Excellence Toolkit, um, that we can download and install on our Power Platform. And this new updated COE, the update was in November 2020, also delivers additional information around the runs of the UI flows. And if this is not enough, then I highly encourage you to go to my blog where I'm describing how you can access the data from the UI flow runs um, using the OData and Power BI so you can create your own dashboard. Ready? Let's go. All right, so the first thing is that once you navigate to this new section called Monitor, you have two pages, the runs and the run queue. The runs actually displays the information about all the RPA executions that happened in that environment. What is also cool, you can use this dashboard to monitor it live. So you can switch this um, option here for live updates and then Whenever there is a new run appearing, a new execution of the UI flow, then it will automatically pop up and you will be able to display it here. Now, what is also important is that once you navigate to a specific run of a specific RPA, you can see the list of all these actions that it actually took to complete its task. And then what is also very important, when you click on a specific action, so for example, um, I will go to um, read from the, from the uh, Excel worksheet. I can as well not only see the details when it started and how much time it took to complete, but I can as well go into uh, the inputs and output logs so I can see what were the inputs, so what were the information used by the action, by the bot, to actually trigger this action. And if there, was, if there were any outputs, I can as well read what were these outputs. So with these logs, I can actually preview or review what data the RPA bot was using to execute a specific step, and then what data was used to then, well, what data was taken out from this step. So what, what data this step actually produced and then was later used. Now, it also tells you what were the variable names. So when you're defining the variables in your flow, then with this information, you are actually able to as well map uh, what the bot was working, so what, what the data the bot was working with and what the variables were using this data. So this is quite a lot of information. What is also important here around the runs, which you already should be familiar with, is that you also have this um, information around the failure. So if you then navigate to the failed flow, you will also have uh, some additional information around the failure reason. So you see um, the screenshot that shows you why it failed or maybe at which action it failed, what was the status of the applications when it failed. Plus, if there was some additional information around the failure, it would also display you this information as it now shows you here. So that this flow failed because it wasn't able to uh, click the specific window. So um, with that, you have like a really big amount of information around your um, UI flows. 
how they run, how they perform, and you can actually go into the action details level. And then, so then if anyone asks you, hey, why this flow failed, you are able not only to say what data it was processing at which step, but as well the failure reason and so on. Now then the second step is the run queues. And under run queues, you do, you'll be seeing all the gateways that you have an access to. If you're a Power Platform admin as I am, I would be seeing all the gateways here, although I have only one in my environment. Nevertheless, in that gateway, once you enter it, uh, you'll be seeing as well the list of the, of the UI flows that are pending for the execution. So now once I go to my flows and then, and then execute just a test flow that I have created some time ago, it's called the create uh, accounts, I'll now run it. You'll notice that in just a while, two things are going to happen. So first, here on the gateway, I do see now that this create accounts flow is pending for being executed. So I can go here uh, and check its execution. It's queued right now. Plus, I can as well um, remove this, uh, this uh, flow from the execution. So once I went to the managing of this gateway, I can actually cancel this flow or if there were more than just one pending for the execution, I could change their priority. So for example, if I now go back and, and at the same time, um, I would trigger this uh, context creation. So right now I could see that there are just two. So first uh, save contacts is now running, the create accounts is queued but I can say, no, you move to the top. So you're the most important from the queue. So if there were more than just one waiting, I would be able to change their priority, to change their order. So right now I have canceled this safe contacts workflow, uh, the UI flow, because I actually don't want it to be executed. And well, I will as well um, cancel this parent, uh, this, this flow here. So therefore, there shouldn't be any RPA UI flows now triggered on my machine. So in the run queue, if there is anything in the run queue, you're really able to manage the order and actually anything that is going on right there. Now, the another thing that is really important here, speaking about the queues, is the priority. So once you navigate to um, the flow that is executing RPA, there is a new attribute added to the run a flow built by Power to my desktop action that is called the priority. So you can either define it high or normal, or you can as well pass this value dynamically. So if you do uh, want to control if that specific run should be um, executed with a high priority or normal, you can do it by passing this variable. So for example, if the email that contains an attachment has a high priority, you can as well mark that the RPA that then stores this attachment somewhere should also have a high priority. Otherwise, it should run with the normal priority. Now this priority means that if this flow is added to the queue and there are like more pending tasks in that queue, then these that have the priority high will be executed first. And then this is kind of um, FIFO queue. So the first in, first out, the first uh, task with a high priority will be executed first and then the second or I mean unless you will manually change the order of these of these tasks by going to the gateway okay so that's it about this new functionality that is called the monitor so I hope it gives you this big picture on how you can actually monitor the runs review the runs review the steps um, review the logs now, then another thing is the center of excellence. I'm going to open the Power BI desktop. So the center of excellence toolkit or the starter kit gives you not only, of course, the information about your UI flows, it gives you much, much more. So it helps you to monitor how your Power Platform performs, um, how your um, makers are, are working, who are your makers, how many apps flows, RPAs you have, how many virtual agents you do have. It also then helps you to govern this information. So there is a set of tools that, uh, that helps you to 
actually um, get a big picture of your environment to like acknowledge which flows are really running a lot a lot of times into issues which flows are maybe not being used so much and so you can possibly remove them uh, manage your licenses add-ons and so on and then finally to nurture so to um, grow this local community around the power platform uh, help you adopt new or help new makers to adopt the power platform and so on but today i just want to focus on these areas of the coe starter, starter kit that will actually help you to show your business and your it how your ui flows are running so first you need to go into the deep dive ui flows this section displays you the information around all the ui flows that you have created in your environment and all the rounds that it have that they have so you can see the flow types you can see the creator information when it was created when was the last run uh, what is the status uh, also there is uh, this general information around uh, how many of those flows are created like how many unique makers are there creating the departments uh, the environments are being created that are being used to create and also a lot of filtering options so that's the first uh, tab that you can use to actually give or have this big picture around your UI flows environment uh, in your organization. Now the second one, which is somehow more important around the monitoring and and um, getting the information about how the flows, the UI flows perform, is or are uh, the two uh, tabs or the two sections here. So the UI flows run details and the UI flows errors. So first I'll go into UI flow runs details. I don't have a lot of them, so um, it's, it's not too much to really show you. However, if your environment is a really active productive environment and you have a lot of runs of the UI flows every day, this dashboard is updated actually every day around uh, midnight. So you will always see information from the past uh, from the from the past, like not not current. It's not being updated live. So be aware you are seeing the information from the day before. And here you do have the information about all these UI flows that have been uh, triggered in the past days, and the information like how often they were being triggered. Well, in my case, there were just only like single executions per days uh, in the last months. So nothing really much, not not much really to see. Now, then the last tab I want to show you is the UI flow errors. This information or this section shows you the information on how your bots are actually performing in terms of failures. So here you will see the, all the error messages that are happening. I have only the click fail to, uh, so far, but if there are others like um, the UI element missing or um, an issue with opening an application or an issue with clicking uh, the UI element within the window. I mean, all these error type details will be here present with the information, which of them is the most common. And also you'll be able to filter one clicking on the specific uh, UI flow name. Here you also have the information around the number of the of total flow runs of the specific UI flow and the number of failed runs. So, well, my safe contacts UI flow is now the most, uh, the one that fails the most. And so with this information, like combining the COE with the monitor we are now having in the Power Platform, we are somehow able to actually deliver this general information to whomever asks, like IT or business, how the bots are performing. If they are failing, why? What are they doing during the whole during the during during each execution? How many of them we have? What is the performance of the gateway? What's happening actually on the gateways? How many bots do we have running every day? And so on and so on. All this information you are able to actually get from these two sources and then merge them. However, if you're interested uh, in doing these kind of reports yourself, I encourage you as well to go into my blog post. The link is below in the, in the description where I'm also describing you how you can actually get this information from the common data service actually, either by using the our data endpoints or simply by querying common data service entities in Power BI 
so that you can actually create your own dashboards that are showing the information that possibly your business requires that are unique and, and the way I showed you is not enough to actually uh, present them. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and it gave you a lot of information around how to monitor and check the runs of your UI flows. If you don't have any questions, write them down in the comments below the video. Always subscribe, like the video, and uh, well, thank you once again and until the next time. Bye-bye.